Hello everybody, welcome back to my stream. It's Marvel Mondays, so uh, of course we uh, have to do this. Um, I'm sorry for starting the stream so late, but uh, honestly, uh, I didn't feel like streaming today, but like I said, it's Marvel Mondays, so uh, I gotta do this, no, no matter what. So, uh, probably not gonna play anything after this, I'm probably just gonna stop streaming as soon as I'm done talking about, uh, you know, my thoughts about you know, episode 3 of WandaVision and where I think the show is going from here. So, uh, definitely, I think episode 3 has, uh, been the best one so far. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know it's still early on, so I'm probably going to keep saying this, uh, multiple times as the show progresses. But, uh, this episode has been my, my favorite one yet. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next episode, uh... <laughs> Far more than I was the last, uh, be because, uh, so much more, well, not really, but from what we've seen in, in the episode, uh, particularly the ending, um, you know, it's definitely, uh, built up a lot of hype uh, around, you know, seeing as to what's going on here and who's behind all this and whatnot, so, um, a couple of things that, that I want to get to first before actually uh, talking about the episode itself. So, uh, last week, um, I said that, um, Monica Rambo, which is Maria Rambo's daughter from Captain Marvel, um, she said something to Nick Fury that, uh, implied that they would be working together. Um, I brought that up last week and, uh, actually rewatched the movie again to, um, remind myself of exactly what it was that was said and, um, what Monica Rambeau said was that um, she, she wanted to to fly up with with uh, with uh, Karen Carol Danvers, which is Captain Marvel, and uh, Nick Fury said only if you lo learn how to glow like like a uh, like like Carol, and uh, and then uh, uh, Monica said um, maybe I'll, I'll build a spaceship or or something like that, so. Not exactly a uh, connection to WandaVision, but, but certainly foreshadowing that uh, Monica Rambeau is going to become uh, the next Captain Marvel or, or, or Spectrum or, or Photon, you know, one of those characters, you know, if not the next Captain Marvel. So, um, and then um, there, were, there was something else that I meant to bring up last week. Uh, in fact, I'll bring it up on my phone right now. Um... Okay, so I honestly wish that the uh, the Fox Disney deal, you know, the whole deal from a couple of years ago, where where Disney bought out Fox and acquired all their properties and stuff, including the movie rights to Fantastic Four and X Men. I actually really wish that uh, that that deal had gone through sooner, because uh, then one of the things that we we could have guessed is that um. WandaVision is a TV show being produced for Mojo World. Now, um, for those that don't know, uh, Mojo World is an extra-dimensional and extra-temporal realm inhabited by semi-humanoid spineless ones. Um, <clears throat> due to their world's unique nature, radio and television signals from Earth, uh, they, they were distorted and sent through time early to the spineless one's existence, bombarding their brains with alien images, which affected their mental state, giving them intense love for televised entertainment, but immense disdain, fear, and awe towards humans. So, based off of that, you know, I, I think, you know, had the, uh, had Disney acquired the, the movie rights for X-Men sooner than they did, then it, it could have been possible that WandaVision was a TV show being broadcast uh, specifically for Mojo World, possibly even being produced by someone from Mojo World, you know, to help them take over Mojo World or whatever. But, you know, seeing as how, you know, it happened just a few years ago, and I'm pretty sure WandaVision was already at least in pre-production um, before, um, you know... The, 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 the Disney Fox deal was complete. S certainly, you know, they already had planned out their, their entire slate for the fourth phase uh, before it was, so they, they, they couldn't plan to include anything from the X-Men or Fantastic Four 
you know, at the time. So even if it wasn't in pre-production already, they hadn't planned for it. So, you know, by the time pre-production would start, it was already too late to um, change anything to include some of that stuff. So, um, I don't know. Uh, certainly, as with always, we'll, we'll see what happens, you know, later down the line. But I definitely don't think, uh, uh, d despite the, you know, all the different things and stories that are being combined to, to create the show WandaVision that um that it's not really gonna do um anything with the X-Men and it's certainly not uh Mojo World. But like I said, uh, had they done the deal sooner it could have been a possibility that um you know that, that that's one of the things that that's what's going on here with the show. So uh now to uh talk about the episode itself, um Okay, so one of the things that I mentioned uh, last week is, as well as just now, that, you know, a whole bunch of different stories are being combined together to excuse me, create the, the story for, for the show. And um, definitely 100% uh, the, the main uh, story that, that, that is being adapted here is uh, House of M. I, I did a little bit of research and, and learned some more things about, you know, the characters and the stories and whatnot. And definitely House of M is probably the biggest one that WandaVision is, is trying to be. Because uh, from the way the episode ended, um, it seemed like uh, Wanda was trying to create this uh, perfect world for herself. You know, like, like she just wants to live this happy-go-lucky, carefree uh, sitcom world, sitcom life that she wants to live, you know, so she, so if anything, you know, that reminds her of, of her, her, her past, you know, things that, that bothered her or whatnot, or anything she doesn't like, you know, she's going to get rid of, you know, whatever it is that, that, that brought up traumatic things in her life, you know, things that she doesn't want to remember and whatnot, and so that explains why, uh, she did what she did at the end of the episode, um, and, uh, another indication of that is the whole, you know, in the, in the last episode, when, when the beekeeper guy, uh, came out of the sewers, and, and she said no, and then, you know, time rewound itself, and, and there were, Vision and Wanda were back in their house, and they didn't confront the, bee, the beekeeper guy this time, so, uh, oh, and another thing like that happened, uh, in this episode as well, um, Early on in that episode, you know, one of the neighbors is, like, cutting the hedges uh, along their fence or, or, or whatever, and uh, I, uh, I'm not really sure how to explain it because we, we don't fully know what's going on just yet, but I, I, to, to put it a certain way, um, I guess the, the, the programming of the neighbor or whatever, uh, he, he, he cut the, the hedge too far and, and continued cutting after it was already gone and, and thus was cutting into his fence, so uh, Vision noticed that, and when he brought it up to Wanda and, and said that he noticed that, that something's wrong, uh, rather than time rewinding, it, it, it snapped back to the previous moment instantly. So instead of us seeing a rewind, the screen, the screen just kind of glows black for a split second, and then we see the conversation restart, and then Vision doesn't bring up the... Uh, <laughs> The, the neighbor glitching out or whatever. So, uh, already Wanda's uh, time reversal powers, if that's what you can call it, have already grown stronger, if that's an indication of anything. So, definitely, um, <clears throat> and, and certainly with all this stuff that was going on in, in, in the house, uh, you know, is another big indicator that, that Wanda's powers are, are, are getting stronger by the minutes. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's more of an indication of, you know, what can happen when, when she loses control of her powers more, more than anything. But, but definitely, uh, to the degree of which uh, things were happening, you know, like, if, if she was less powerful, she wouldn't have been able to do any of that. So, uh, uh, definitely, uh, definitely, you know, like I said, her, her powers are getting stronger and, and, they're, and they're increasing in power rapidly. Um, so, uh, the baby twins that, that 
one that gave birth to in the episode are, are Speed and Wiccan. And uh, I'm not sure if... Uh, well, that's assuming, of course, that they're real, which I don't think that they're going to turn out to be because, you know, that that's the way things played out in the comics, you know. But at the same time, because I don't feel like we, we know enough to, to, to know for sure that that's Mephesto who, who's behind all this. Like, like so here's a theory that, that, that I have. Um, it, it's possible that, um, again, we don't know any of the circumstances be, behind uh, how any of this came to be, so... Um, let, let's just say, for whatever reason, um, Mephisto appeared before Wanda and, and offered her, you know, a reality, a dream reality, a life that she always wanted to live, you know, a life where she doesn't um, have to worry about her troubles or, or anything that's traumatic in her life anymore. Uh, you know, he would grant this to her, but leave it up to her to maintain it. So, um, that's you know, what happened, and, and that's what's going on here. Um, but um, how that would tie into the whole, you know, the babies being part of Mephisto's soul thing, um, I don't know, again, because it's still early on in the show, we don't really know enough about what's going on to make uh, educated uh, guesses on to, you know, how everything fits together. We, we can only make, you know vague uh, guesses uh, as to what's happening with, with such and such. You know, I, obviously, uh, uh, like I said before last week, uh, you know, S.W.O.R.D. is involved with this whole thing, and, and Monica was seen wearing a, a, a necklace with the S.W.O.R.D. emblem on it, uh, so, you know, that, that that's, you know, <laughs> so what, what I heard was that the, the the theory that, that, that I heard going around was that the helicopter that Wanda found in her front yard uh, in the last episode was uh, uh, the helicopter that Monica Rambeau uh, came into rescue with. Um, and it was shrunken down to toy size uh, when she arrived, which would explain why, um, you know, she's not a, a resident of Westview, you know, because uh, Agatha and, and the neighbor that I mentioned before... Uh, brought that up to Vision at the end of the episode, you know, just before Monica disappeared. Um, so, uh, you know, that that was the, you know, the indicator that, that she was an outsider. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure she, <laughs> yeah, Monica kind of blew her cover uh, with, uh, with, uh, with what she said uh, about Ultron at the end of, of the episode. Uh, but, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure if she hadn't said that, then, then, then Wanda wouldn't have noticed the, the necklace she was wearing. Uh, but certainly she was able to connect the dots, you know, notice that, uh, the, the, the emblem that was on the helicopter and, and how the, the, the necklace that Monica was wearing, you know, they looked similar enough to each other that, that she could tell, you know, that the two were connected somehow, you know, so... Um, uh, and then, um, oh yeah, um, so the shows, uh, or, or rather, um, each episode is, is a different era of sitcom television, and, uh, since uh, this was the, the 70s episode, and that means that the next, uh, episode, which is gonna debut this week, um, is gonna be the 80s episode, and, uh, you know, Obviously, as the show progresses, we're going to learn more about it, but um, I'm not... I'm thinking, so the next episode will be the 80s, that means the episode 5 will be the 90s, but uh, I'm pretty sure that's where uh, that kind of... Uh, like, from there, I'm not really sure where the show is going to go. Because I'm pretty sure they're not going to do uh, the 2000s era because, you know, people aren't really nostalgic for that. It was only 20 years ago. Well, I mean, I suppose, you know, 20 years is long enough to be nostalgic for something. But uh, still, uh, it's not old enough. You know what I mean? And, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's because of that that uh, either they're going to do it and they just haven't shown it in the marketing yet. Or, um, you know, the, 
the 90s is where it's going to stop progressing. And uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see where the show goes from there. It's, they're probably going to drop the whole, you know, this is a... <laughs> This is a, a sitcom thing and not, you know, an, an actual, uh, uh, you know, MCU thing, you know, which, you know, we, we know by now because of the ending for episode three. Uh, but uh, still, um, yeah, there, there, there's uh, a lot of questions to be had a, a, about how exactly the show is going to end. Uh, certainly, uh, it can't keep up the, the whole sitcom facade forever. Uh, so it, it does need to be dropped at some point. The question is, when is it going to happen? You know, because... Uh, yeah, if, if, if the conflict drags on for, for too long, then... then I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm kind of uh, running out of things to say at this point. Um, uh, there, there's not really... Uh, it's not really... Uh, oh, yeah... Uh, uh, I did see talk uh, about a pendant that was uh, around uh, Agatha Harkness's uh, neck. That that because uh, you know she was a, a, a kind of a prominent character in the first two episodes, but we barely saw her in this one. And uh, excuse me, when we did see her was at the very end. And uh, you know she no that the neighbor. Uh, Definitely wanted to tell Vision something, like he wanted to let them know exactly what is going on here, but I guess, you know, because Hagatha clearly knows as well, but uh, for, for whatever reason, you know, she, she thought it might be a bad idea to, to let them know at least this early on uh, as to what's really going on, so uh, she, she didn't want to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, um, too early, but... Uh, uh, certainly, as things progress, uh, it's going to be increasingly more difficult to, to keep up the charade. So, uh, you know, she might have to uh, say something at some point or another. You know, like like she might be the one to, to pull the curtain back, you know, on the whole thing. You know, and, and we still don't know who, you know, her husband is, you know. And uh, there, there's a theory going around that that... that Agatha's husband is Mephisto, so again, it, it could be anything that 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 that's, you know, certainly uh, there, there's more fingers pointing towards uh, Mephisto uh, being involved than there than there were before, and uh, I'm pretty sure there's going to be even more fingers pointing at him, you know, after the next episode. Um, but I still have my doubts uh, about uh, his involvement in, in, in the show. Again, t to me, the only way that uh, he could be involved is if, um, you know, he manipulated Wanda in, into creating this uh, false reality for her, you know, this ideal reality where, where she's always happy, uh, but, but then, you know, left it up to her to, to regulate it. So, um it's also possible that, um, uh, you know, she did this of her own accord for whatever reason. You know, we don't know what exactly caused it, but, oh, that, that's right, the, the ad for, for episode three. Uh, this one, uh, okay, so I wasn't entirely sure about Hydra's involvement uh, previously, but uh, now, now that... Um, this is the second time that, that Hydra has been brought up in, in, in one of these uh, in-show ads. Uh, I, I definitely think that, that they're involved somehow. Uh, th this time the ad was for a thing called Hydra Soap. <laughs> uh, and and uh, the, the slogan for it was, bring out the goddess in you. Which is uh, definitely a reference to uh, Wanda's uh, ever-increasing powers, you know, so... Certainly, that gives uh, credence to the idea that, that this is an experiment that, that Hydra is conducting on Wanda um, to, uh, you know, bring out her true power or whatever. So, again, how they're doing it, you know, is is uh, still up in the air, if that's the case. Um, or it could be, again, just, you know, hearkening back to you know, a, a memory of hers, like, like from when Hydra was, uh, using her to, uh, using, uh, 
not, not the Tesseract, the, uh, Loki's Scepter, which had the Mind Gem inside it. You know, it, it's hearkening back to, uh, her memories of, uh, when they, they were using her to, uh, to give her powers using the, the Mind Gem in the first place, you know, so... It could be a reference to that, or it could be, again, something new that they're doing to her. And uh, uh, certainly, I, I can't think of an explanation for how the uh, <laughs> in-universe ads are, 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 are happening, you know. But but then again, you know, this is actually a, a, a TV show that, that, that S.W.O.R.D. is monitoring, you know, so tell me how that works. You, you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, there, there's, uh, definitely a, a, a lot going on here and, uh, a lot to talk about, but, uh, not as much, uh, to talk about because this is only one episode as opposed to last week, which was two. Um, uh, let me see. What else was, <laughs> uh, so, uh, nah, 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 nah. nah. I'm not gonna, I'm not really gonna talk about, you know, any of the, I, I'll give my r review of the whole show, um, you know, talking about what I like or, or, or didn't like, um, after the, the whole season's done, because that, that's when I feel will be more appropriate to talk about things that I personally liked a, about the show, as, as opposed to, you know, just guessing as to what's gonna happen next, um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I think I'm going to be, be done for tonight, actually, because I think I, I talked about all the stuff that I wanted to talk about with this episode um, f for now. Um, 